Welcome aboard p and Iona. Come and take a look at our standard inside cabin. Cabin 15415. Our cabin was directly beneath the sky dome. Make sure you stay until the end to find out if we experienced any noise disturbances. As cabins go, it was actually quite spacious. Not the biggest one we've been in, but also not the smallest. These little shelves are quite handy to keep the P&O room service menus and brochures here. There is also a kettle in the room, but we put it in the wardrobe because we don't drink tea or coffee. As you can see here, there are two UK plug outlets and one two pin European outlet. I didn't really see the use for this extra light here. I think this light would have been a lot more effective around the mirror. Under the vanity table, there was some storage space, though not the biggest I've ever seen in a cruise before. This bed was probably one of the most comfiest I've experienced on a cruise ship. There were some cubby holes on each side of the bed, but I personally really missed the drawers. There was actually no drawers at all in this cabin. Mwah, ah, ah, ah. I had a UK wall outlet on my side of the bed, but Amy did not have one. There were connections for USB underneath each of the lamps. There was also a fridge in the room. And a little bit more storage space next to it. Although this string did annoy me a little bit, it kept getting in my way. Let's move on to the wardrobes. Here were some more cubby holes so you can put all your clothes and whatever you want to put in there. And there was also a safe. And a hairdryer. The safe wasn't the biggest we've ever had before, but more than enough to fit a purse, wallet, and a couple of phones or passports in here. And here is where our life jackets were stored. There was a decent amount of hanging space. However, I do feel like there could have been some more coat hangers, especially the coat hangers with the clippy trousers because there were none in this cabin. Clippy trousers? What do you call them? Haggers for trousers. <laughs> okay. And there was plenty of room to slip your suitcases underneath the bed and even room for backpacks too. We loved having these metal hooks across the wall. We love them. You're the only one that used them. I left some there for spare. In the case of an emergency, emergency instructions are on the back of your cabin door. Have you gone exploring? Or are you taking it easy? Let your steward know so they can clean your room. Although bear in mind that the evening turn down is no longer available, so your room will only be cleaned in the morning. You will also need your room key to power the lights. Let's move into the bathroom. lights were turned out there was still some light in the shower which was really handy in the middle of the night. We felt the storage space in the shower and the bathroom itself was excellent although there was one quite high shelf that was a bit too out of reach for us. It was also fantastic to have a shower door and not a curtain that doesn't stick to you when you try to clean yourself. The door also opened both ways and the mirror was never fogged up, which made me sad because I couldn't draw a ghost on it. The shower had so much room in there. You could do a workout. Eat your heart out, Joe Wicks. Oh, hello. 
Welcome to the shower on board PNO Iona. While you're here, why not like, comment, and subscribe? You're here anyway. Be rude not to, wouldn't it? I'll carry on. There's even a retractable washing line to dry your clothes should you feel the need to wash on holiday. There was also shampoo and shower gel available if you happen to forget yours or fancy a change. The shower gel was really nice. I definitely used it. We're happy to report that we slept like babies each night. However, in the day, if there were Sky Dome rehearsals or performances, there was a little bit of sound. Thanks for watching! We've got a whole series coming up on Piano Iona, so we're going to bore you to death with it. Next week we are releasing our first vlog on Iona, so make sure you're subscribed.